Okay. Okay, good. So this is about how far we got last time. It did take me longer than I thought it was going to, but I got the more or less what we did on the whiteboard in our last meeting into OneNote, I guess it's a software, and uploaded it as a PDF to Islander just like a couple hours ago. So it's up there now. Um, you didn't have much of the benefit of that for the quiz. The examples are more or less the same as what we did in class, but now you have it there. And now we should be able to record what we're doing again, which is great. I'm also recording this. What? Yeah, you can do the law and order routine. Um, I'm also recording this on video right now. So I'll continue doing my best to post these to that YouTube channel, which is public. So I'm kind of curious as to who's out there finding that right now. Yeah, there's, there's funny pictures of cats on the internet. That's how they get you. Okay. So continuing from Lewis acid base, there's also polyprotic acids. And there's polybasic bases, but really the acids are the ones that we need to be concerned about. Um, in particular, there are two that you simply must know for all of the science majors and kinesiology and marine or other majors to know that. But certainly for marine science, biology, and environmental science. And those are phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4. <laughs> Falls in the simply must know category. And H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. Phosphate is the most prevalent buffer in biology, and carbonate is the most, I don't know if it's the most prevalent buffer, but it's the buffer that's relevant to CO2 and ocean acidification and that sort of chemistry, and respiration for that matter. Why are they called polyprotic? Because they have the ability to lose or to give up more than one proton. Perfect. We will go through the exercise of writing out the three equilibria for losing a proton sequentially for H3PO4. This, if I, I remember right, is still a mastering chemistry question. Um, so now you'll have a sense for what they're looking for there. And I'm pretty notorious for putting this on exams, the phosphate equilibria, because they're arguably the most important buffer in the world as we know it. So I think we should do it. The, we'll do that in a second, but the takeaways here are you need to be able to identify whether uh, a molecule is monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic and monobasic or dibasic, which is sort of the, the opposite where a dibasic molecule can take two protons instead of giving up for an acid. Uh, another thing to note is that the prefix mono, di, or tri gives the number of equilibria you should be looking for. So phosphoric acid, H3PO4, is triprotic. Okay, and when I say right equilibria here in the middle, I mean the, the acid equation, like the Ka products and reactants. So we'll do that. <laughs> Need some space. Okay. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4, reacts with water to give hydronium and what? Well, if H3PO4 lost one proton, lost one H plus. You need to figure out what essentially what's left. Yeah, so keep that molecule, but give up a proton and give up a charge. So instead of being neutral, it'll be one minus. And we're going to do it this way. <coughs> 
gonna do the PKAS in a second. I can write a second equilibrium starting with, essentially starting from the products of the first. Said that H3PO4 was triprotic, because tri, because there's three protons that could come off. H2PO4 should have a minus sign, but is what protic? Yeah, diprotic. And yields a similar set of products. So you still get hydronium. But now you, you, you have to lose another proton and another charge to get these products. Try writing the third equilibrium on your own. So again, here you'll be taking the phosphate product of the second and then letting it react with water. very last one, HPO4 2 minus is monoprotic because there's one proton. And we can label the products, in this case we'll do it that way, we can label these in the same way but for basic. So we can say is it monobasic, dibasic, tribasic, that kind of thing, based on how many protons it could take on. So H2PO4 minus top right of this. How many protons could that take? One, so it's monobasic. You get the idea. How many protons could HPO4 2 minus take? Two, so dibasic. And tribasic. And the tribasic, this is why if you go in my lab and look at Cynthia Okoreafor's work, you will find she works with potassium phosphate, comma, tribasic. So that's tribasic and with however many potassiums it needs, which is three. <coughs> you should get her to come talk about her stuff. this out is because even if this is the chemical you're interested in, you cannot pull a bottle off the shelf that has just one ion. You can't find a bottle with something that's minus. The charge needs to be balanced by some counter ion, and usually for this case it would be sodium or potassium. Okay. Any questions or thoughts on these so far? Okay. These are equilibria. So you could write K equals products over reactants for each one. And if you took the negative log of that, you would get you would get three pKa's. These of these is an acid equilibrium, so it has a Ka, and then if you take a negative log, it becomes P that, so pKa. So I have a column on the left for the pKa's. 
of each of these three acids, because a pKa must relate to an acid. That's the A part. <sighs> but those are going to be numbers, and I don't know them off the top of my head. So where am I going to find them? The yeah, the internets, but what part of the internets? Not yes, Wikipedia. Oh. Wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> yes, Wikipedia. So remember, for the mastering chemistry, you want to use the textbook for Ka's and pKa's because that's simply because that's how the answers are calculated. So you want to arrive at the same number to get the points. In the real world, outside of mastering chemistry, you'll often go to Wikipedia. And I could have searched, if I wanted the pKa's for those, I could have searched for any of those chemicals, monobasic, dibasic, tribasic, whatever you like. What you want to do to find a pKa is to search for the acid. You want to search for the acid form because it's the pKa means it's for the acid, so you need that. And then you want to scroll down, and most of them will have an acidity. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Make it bigger. Okay, here. Usually it's going to be in a table like that. And I mean, if you Google search phosphoric acid PKA, you'll find it as well. But Wikipedia has numbers that at least have some reference associated with them. So right or wrong, they're copied from somewhere else, and it's their fault. <laughs> so we have 2.15, 7.20, 12.32. Will I give, so the question was, will you give, will I give you that? Will I give you which, what part? Yeah, so on an exam or a quiz, I will give you the numbers for a PKA. Um, yeah, yeah, I will give you this. Which of these is the most acidic of these acids? The triprotic, the diprotic, or the monoprotic? Triprotic, why? Say that one more time. It has the lowest pKa. So why does something with a low pKa mean that that is the strongest of a set of acids you've been asked to compare? If you, if you work it out so you're writing out products over reactants, you can convince yourself that way. A small pKa is a large Ka, the way I remember it is that pKa scales in the same direction as pH. So a lower pH is more acidic, a lower pKa is more acidic. That's the shortcut to remembering how to order these. And remember that all of these have a Ka or a pKa, so they're all technically weak acids by the definition of strong and weak. But within weak acids, you'll often be asked on a weak basis. You'll often be asked with a relative strength. Which of these is the strongest? Which is a strong enough, which of these is a strong enough acid to protein? Like So let's do the base and then we'll do an example of that. What means a stronger base in terms of pKa? Higher pKa? Yeah, it's the other way, higher pKa, right? When you get to organic chemistry, this becomes a really big deal. I guess in biochemistry, too. Because in, in organic, you're frequently concerned with, is this base strong enough? Do I have a strong enough base? And what you need to do is see, is the pKa high enough for the conjugate acid?
Let's do a, uh, an example problem that's really close to something you might see. Which, if any, of the above acids are strong enough to protonate lactate and pKa or lactic acid equals 3.86. Lactic acid, one of my favorite acids. Great chemical to work with. Great chemical. Underrated. One of the cheapest commodity chemicals you can buy. It's really cheap. Sorry? I think it's by ferment I think it's produced by fermentation. Citric acid is done that way, and they're about the same price. But I don't know for a fact when I check. Okay. Strong enough to protonate lactate. If what you're looking for is a strong enough acid, you need a PKA that is blank compared to this. Lower. You need a PKA that's a stronger <laughs> acid. So go back to your list above. Are there any acids that are strong enough to protonate that? Yeah, which, what acids? Only the triprotic one. H3PO4. But PJ, I know you, man. And when you ask that question on a quiz or an exam, you're going to ask it the other way. <coughs> Which, if any, of the above bases Strong enough to deprotonate, which means take a proton off of lactic acid. So, same pKa as the previous problem. You want, yes, yeah, so you want pKa's that are higher, because that's going to mean a stronger base. But then, Okay, so you can go to those equilibria, but you still need to pick which chemical is the base. So let's go back up and see which of these equilibria have pKa's that are strong enough, strongly basic enough. They're higher than 3.86. Second and third. Okay. Out of those, what's, which ones are the bases that I need to think about? Reactants or product? product? Yeah, product, right. So you need those two reactions, but the bases, in, in, as written, are HPO4 2 minus and PO4 3 minus. So you need to pick the right equilibrium based on, like, okay, is the PKA high or lower? Then you need to go figure out which you need, the acid part or the base part. So for each of these equilibria, this is the acid, and this is the base. In that equilibrium. Because they had a higher PKA, and these are the bases rather than the acids. Lisa, how far are you in organic right now? In organic? 
You in the second semester with me? Done. Yeah. How often did like acid base is this base strong enough to come up in organic? Yeah. Lisa said very often. Um, it's, it comes up just constantly in organic chemistry. And that was one of the things that I didn't really understand when I took it, and I wish I had. So if you can get, if you can go into organic, understanding like how to think about is this base strong enough, how to think about is this acid strong enough, you are ahead of the curve. That's where you want to be. And so we're practicing. <laughs> Questions or thoughts on polyprotic and polybasic, or is this acid or base strong at this stage? How much higher than the GKA would be compared to like bullet Oh, that's an awesome question. So the question was how much higher or lower, like how much, how far away does it need to be? So if we are looking for a strong enough acid, how much lower does the GKA need to be than the one I'm looking for? That's the next chapter. That's exactly where we're going. Um, if you're one pH unit, um, it's log base 10, right? Is the pH is the negative log of H3O plus. So one being one pH unit lower means you'll deprotonate or you protonate 90% and leave 10% behind. And if you go one more, if you go two pH units, then it's 99%. So it goes like by nines that way. But in the next chapter, we will actually calculate exactly that. It's an awesome question. So how, so how do I, if it's, I, I sort of glibly said, if it's on the right side of these equilibria, it's the base I'm concerned about there. But you could rewrite it as the reactant on the left side of the equilibrium, and then how come it's not a base there? Or how do I, or more generally, like how do I parse that? How do I think about that? Really good question. E many of these chemicals can be either an acid or a base, depending on what they're doing. So remember in the Lewis acid base, we talked about how Sometimes it's tempting for me to phrase the question, is this a Lewis acid? Whereas a better question is, is this acting as a Lewis acid? Here, a better way of me phrasing it is, is this acting as a base, or acting as an acid? When a molecule is giving a proton to, in this case, water, it's acting as an acid. And if you wrote the equilibrium in reverse, if you're going from right to left, PO4 three minus is taking a proton from H3O plus to make these. That's that kind of action that is how the, the clean is the most reliable way to define what's acting as an acid and what's acting as a base. That's a great question. Is that, is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I repeat what I just said. Okay. What I'm trying to say in a less verbose way than I'm inclined to do <coughs> is that you need to think about not just is a chemical, is it an acid or a base, but in an equilibrium that is written out, is it acting as an acid or a base? And the way you define that for Bronsted acid is, is it giving a proton or is it taking a proton? If it's an acid equilibrium, like a KA or a PKA, the chemical in the reactant is giving a proton to water to make hydronium and then what's called the conjugate. If you remember that nomenclature, that helps too, because if you say, okay, I know that's an acid, and I know acids create conjugate bases, then you go, okay, that's the base, because it's called a conjugate base. The other way you can think about it is if you, it's an equilibrium, so you can run this reaction in reverse, and you can say PO4 three minus, that has to be a base, because what it's doing is taking a proton from hydronium to generate water and the other reactant. I actually said it in four words. The question is how would it do more than just doing ice boxes over water and get close enough? So the question is how, okay, this is all well and good. How do I take this to calculating a pH or finding out what a pH is under certain conditions? Can I do it with an ice table? Yes, you can. And what we do in the buffer section, which is the next chapter, it is called the henderson hasselbach equation, which is essentially a rearrangement of an ice table so that it's faster. But yes, that's exactly what you do. They're equilibrium. 
And if you know the initial concentration and can figure out the change, you can find the equilibrium concentration, which in the problems we did can lead you to pH. So yes, that's exactly what you need. Um, there are ways to shortcut it, which is what we'll do, but yeah, that's the, that's the incentive. Great. So the question was, when we were approaching the question, is this, uh, are, are there any bases strong enough to deprotonate lactic acid? Why do we use the pKa's, not the pKb's? Because the pKb is for a base reaction, and that should tell you what's a stronger base. Great question. The most direct answer is because pKa is what you will find on Wikipedia and in the textbooks. You will rarely find a pKb. And remember, we know how to convert between the two, because pKa plus pKb adds to 14, or PKW, but you 14. So if you, you can convert between them, what I recommend, though, is sticking with just a PKA. You can do it with PKB, and the logic kind of flips. you got to think about it in a different way, and I don't want to go through any great detail because it's more than you need. Um, so if you find this doesn't make sense, come see me, and I'll show you how to do it the other way. But it's best to find one and memorize it, stick with that. And I like PKA because I'm used to thinking about pH, lower is more acidic, higher is more basic. That works for me. Um, but again, I can show you the other way if you need it. Um, you can do it in PKB, but you have to play it a little hard. Um, are all strains of aspartic acid with enough water to try to sort of go straight through the entire basis of the equilibrium? Very good question. So here, water is acting as a base. If I add enough water, can I take, if I put triprotic and water in solution and I have enough water there, can I take it all the way to tribasic? My answer to that is these are all equilibria, and the, the equilibria all have a value because I have a pKa. So none of these equilibria are zero or infinity, which is mathematically disallowed, but they all have numbers, which means if they have a number, they have non zero products and reactants concentrations. They can be very big, they can be very small, but they're not. So what, one of the things I think is interesting about chemistry is if you put any one of these chemicals in solution, by definition of those being non-zero, you have some quantity of every single chemical on that whiteboard. If you put in a tiny drop of H3PO4, you have non-zero quantities of H3PO4, H2PO4 minus, H3PO4 two minus, and PO4 two minus. And you will soon be empowered to calculate them all. I generally won't ask you to because that's a lot of work, but they're, that's, that's real like deep chemistry stuff, and that as soon as it's in equilibrium, nothing is zero. Everything has some quantity. Sorry, I'm just reading about it. So as a chemist, are you ever able to just um, take a, take your monobasic or just get the uh, dibasic instead of getting, out, getting all three? So that's an awesome question. So the corollary question to that that Joy asked is, okay, but then as a chemist, can you ever get just one? If you said you, if you always have the equilibrium, you always have non-zero concentrations, can you get just one? If you get rid of the water. Yes. So if you have solid K3PO4 that is dry, that has no water, you have K3PO4. And you don't have the others in equilibrium. I'm saying you can get the salts of many of these. Uh, H3PO4 is a liquid, if not a gas, so that one you would have to work pretty hard to get. But yes, you can, and the way you do it is get rid of the water so these equilibria don't happen. Very clever. Good question. Really good, guys. Yeah, that was a mean question session right there. That was good. <laughs> I thought the other day when I was driving home and my daughter was asking me questions for a half an hour in a row, more than that, 45 minutes in a row, that basically all I do every day is get asked questions. Like I come here and I get asked questions and it's good because people are thinking about things, they're seeking help. And then I get in the car coming home from daycare and Sasha's like, what's Griffin doing? Because she has a friend named Griffin. And I just go, I don't, I don't know, what, what do you think Griffin is doing? I don't, I don't know. Eating dinner, maybe? I don't know. What's Cooper doing? I don't know what Cooper's doing. He's hanging out with his, hanging out with his family, being, being Koopy, you know? Yeah, being all Cooper. You're the man of wisdom here. Well, I'm the man of answers, but I don't know that they're right or wrong. 
Okay, so if there's no further questions and no further ridiculous stories from me about driving home from day here, for now, here are a whole bunch of practice problems. Woo! Next slide is the answers. So you can skip to that and not learn anything if you want. Let's look at the categories. These are not the, the type of word problems, as it were, that you would see on an exam, right? There's, not, there's no context. There's no, like, blood is buffered by this. None of that. It's just calculate. It's just mechanics. So let's look at what we do. We calculate pH, and then we've got strong acid, strong base. We've got an acid with a pKa, so that must be weak. So weak. We've got a... Chemical that, okay, maybe triethylamine, maybe that's new, but it's got a PKB, so it's probably a base, and it's probably weak. And then we've got a mixture, that's, that's the head scratcher for this one, but I can help you. So calculating pH for, in this case, one, two, three, four, four and a half categories of problems. Okay. Now, the second one, what concentration would give a pH? So that's the, the reverse, right? That's where, okay, same equation, same squares of knowledge, but now I have a pH that's desired, and I need to calculate how much of that acid I need to add to get there. Okay? And then at the bottom, we identify Lewis acids and Lewis bases. So what should we do? I want to start buffers today, but we can spend some time on this. Do you want to do a few of these like together right now? Do you want to do this for like homework and go over it together at the start of the next one? What's good? Wanna pick a few? Let's do let's pick a few. Now they say it. Now, do it now. What are you waiting for? All right. Get to the chopper, yeah, the governor. Classic. Classic. Okay. Let's do... Let's do these two. Let's do 1.3 molar triethylamine. A chemical with a pKb of 3.25. And then a mixture of 0.25 molar sulfuric acid and 1 molar KOH. Okay. Should you ever be unlucky enough to work with triethylamine, I ask that you do it in a fume hood because it smells like rotting fish. It's pretty unpleasant. I see a capital K in there, and it's not Kelvin. So that means this is an equilibrium. And so I therefore recommend starting with... Well, you'll get to an ice table, but how do you know what to put in the ice table? Yeah, you want to get the products of the reactants, which means you can go one step back and write the balanced equation. And for this, triethylamine, I didn't give you a chemical formula. So you know it's a weak base. I would use B. I mean, you can abbreviate it any way you like. I would use the generic base equation. What do bases do? They yoink protons. And here, I've been in the habit of putting the minus sign on the right of OH. You will see it both ways. Sometimes the minus is on the left, the negative charge, but either way is fine. It's the same. KB equals products of reactants. And I don't know 
what that is yet, but I can get it from PKB. And for what was asked for is calculate pH. And so far I've not written hydronium on the board, so I can't calculate pH. I will need to go through. I need to get an ice table, but what chemical? Yeah, POH and hydroxide. I'll need to go through the hydroxide from that equilibrium, take that to POH and then pH. Round and round squares of knowledge we go. Okay, so if I undo the negative log here, I need to do 10 to the negative 3.25. And I get it. Now it made me a nice table. Put in the initial concentration I knew, the other ones you can leave as zero for now. Um, all the coefficients in all these acid base equations. Well, for all the weak acid base equations, or all the coefficients would be one, so that's nice. Is X small? Yeah, yeah sure, you betcha. It's so tiny, that's right. I take my equilibrium row, plug it into my equilibrium expression, and get 5.6 e negative 4 times 1.3 equals square root x is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2. What though? Molar hydroxide, because x in the table was hydroxide. H equals a negative log of 2.7 times 10 minus 2. Keep an extra sig for now. Sig figs, I think. No units. And what did I say? Two, two sig figs, no units. Answered the question because I got pH. And it's mildly basic, and the pH is basic, so that's good. So the question was, is there an, a line, a dividing line between weak and strong? Yes. And the line, it's easier to describe it for acids, but the same is, is true for base. If an acid has a pKa that's negative, if it has a pKa less than zero, it's considered functionally strong. The book defines it, and most people define it as a strong acid completely dissociates. We said it's an equilibrium, so it's never like Complete. It basically it dissociates so much that it becomes almost impossible to measure how much it is not dissociating. So in practice, if you have a pKa, so if you, if HCl is a classic strong acid. If you Google search pKa HCl, you'll find some crazy stuff. But among them is some legitimate science that estimates the pKa as negative six. <coughs> so it has a number. It's just hard to measure because it's negative zero. For a strong
strong base, it's going to be what? That's okay. So it, the, the strongest acid has to be less than zero. The strongest base has to be higher than 14. Higher than 14, exactly. Yep. So yeah, my phrase is in the same way. And you can, yeah, you got it. Great. So 0 and 14 are the traditional cutoffs, but it's arbitrary. That's just what basically what we can do with higher. Good question. Weak base problem. Weak base problem. Next, I wanted to do pH of mixture of zero point two five molar H two SO four plus one. I didn't put the point, but one molar KOH. Uh oh. Dude gave me an acid and a base and asked me to calculate pH. Well, what do acids and bases do? They react with each other, neutralize. Right. So your job, your first job, is to figure out what happens when this reaction is done. What's left? I like to start with the limiting reactant. Which one of these is going to be limiting? The protons? So, okay. The protons or the hydroxides? Protons, right. It's as if I had 0 0.5 molar H plus and 1 molar OH minus. The smaller one is the, yeah. I know. So 0.25, but yeah, there's two, right? So good catch. So in this case, this is if I had twice as many of the protons. So which one is limiting? Is, is the protons? Is the acid? What happens to limiting reactants? They get used up. So they're all gone. I will not have any acid. This is now a base problem. How much base is left? Yeah, exactly. Now it's a now that you know how much OH minus is left, you can calculate your pH. So go ahead and do that one from there. Yes. Yep. Excellent question, and yes. Because OH minus is a strong base, and SO42 minus is a horrendous base. So the strong takes over. So that's good. So let's do, actually, you know what? That's a good point. What you now have in solution after this reaction in solution, what are like what are the products of this? You have 0.25 molar potassium sulfate. The neutralization makes water. And you have five molar KOH. OH minus is a strong base. SO4 2 minus could take protons. It could be considered dibasic because you could add two protons to that. But it's weak. It's so weak. Such a weak base. In solution, you have a strong base and a weak base. Which one's going to dominate? I mean, dominate. Strong base, domination. If you have a strong and a weak, just, just do the strong. Don't even worry about the weak. Okay. 
creation. Is it 13.7 or 13.3? I don't remember. Let's forget my log 7. Let's forget my logs. So pH is? Oh, I did it wrong. Sorry. That's what it is. So the way these get turned into word problems of substance is to give you a reaction, let you figure out what the products are when the dust settles, what's left. When the octagon is open, who is still standing? In this case, it was hydroxide, and then you calculate your pH from there. Questions or thoughts on that one? Cool. That one's really starting to elbow into the next chapter, so that's good that you guys are, are working on that. That's great. Let's do... Let's do the middle one here. Oops, it's not a great color to write in. What concentration of acetic acid with a pKa of 4.76 would yield a solution of pH 2.0? I'll rewrite that down here. How do I categorize this? So I know I was asked for concentration, so my answer should be something in molar or acetic acid. What type of problem, what category of problem? Acid or base? Acid. This guy has acid in there. Some of the bases when I face. But acid is usually less. And that has a problem. Strong or weak? Weak, which you know because? Because it has a PKA that is given. Right, so it's a weak acid problem. I have to speed run in reverse, but all the mechanics, all the what equals what, are going to be the same for any other weak acid problem you've done. Where do I start? You guys tell me what to do. Get yourself to products over reactants, and then figure out numerically what that what that equals.
I do next? Hey, I'm gonna set up an ice table. I'll take your suggestion. I think it's a good one. It's not a first. No, man, come on. Okay, so ice table with products and reactions that have concentrations, leaving out water. And what I don't know, so here's the, here's the part that's different than the way I have run these most commonly in the past. What I usually do is take the initial concentrations and put them in, but, I, but that's what I need. Can't really put X, because X is used for something else in there, but I'll leave that. Initially, I must have had zero, so I could put those. Um, change I can still hash out in the same way. I can use the coefficients from the balance equation. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. Yes. The one variable that was given to me, the one number I was given to me that I haven't used yet, is pH. And from pH, I can get to the equilibrium concentration of H3O+. Plus. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, so it'll also be the constant. Because it's X, it's everywhere X shows up, that's X. Nice. Is X small? Yeah, it's still small. So if that's helpful, I can scratch this out. So what is my equilibrium concentration of? Yeah, pH equals 2.0 equals negative log H3O plus, get it squished over there, H3O plus, because of what logs do, is I should have one sig fig, so one times 10 to the minus two. And therefore, x equals 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, now I've got something. Ka equals 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5th, the number I found from the pKa equals x, but now I can, so it would be x squared over ha, except I know what x is. Don't forget to square that whole thing. Now I have an equation with one variable, and because x is small, and I guess you could even leave x in, right, since that's the number, that's fine. If you wanted here, you didn't, you don't need x is small to solve this algebraically, like you don't need the quadratic formula. It'll work out just fine to one sig fig without, with x is small. Let's solve for ha from here. Six molar acetic acid. My stars, that's a lot of acetic acid.
the, the concentration of concentrated acetic acid, I want to say it's 12 molar. I don't remember. I don't remember for ACL. Or for ACL. For ACL, it's 12. So you can get glacial, what's called glacial acetic acid, which is nominally pure. It's like 99% acetic acid. They call it glacial because it freezes really easily. Like if it's cold, like when I worked in New York City, it would get cold. It would get these beautiful little crystals with like a miniature face burger on top. It's kind of called glacial. But that's neither here nor there. Weak acid problem, but the other way that what we most commonly have are your acid concentration. The key to this is using the pH. Is that not your X table? Doing everything, saying, wait, I don't have X, and then going and finding X. Okay. I think that's good for practice on those. You can do the rest of the practice on these. The answers are on there, and I'm happy to go over them with you. These are good practice problems because these are the kinds of things I put on exams. All right, let's mop up acid base. Mop up. What did we do? Yeah. Types of acid base. So Lewis and Bronsted. What's that? Mm-hmm. Good one. Polyprotic, polybasic. Strong weak. This is a slashy chapter. Writing a slash. Yeah, we use dice tables as a problem solving tool. Um, I would say we did this, what I. What I all the squares of knowledge. <laughs> Basically all those conversion factors in graphical form. That's good. So we did weak strong acid base and then a couple different ways of looking at those. And then we did Lewis acid, bronsted acid, and polyprotein. Sweet. Okay. Before we do this, um, I want to tell a kid's joke. Is that okay? I don't know why I'm asking if I'm going to do it anyway. Why was the scarecrow given an award at work? Because he was outstanding in his field. That's a dad problem. So the question, the question was, is this, is this a chemistry professor problem or a dad problem? She's a thing. She's a thing. I say problem. It's the problem. The real problem is when you got both, because it's like it's nonlinear. It, <laughs> let's look at pH versus pKa. I said that the way I think about these is they go in the same direction. The lower pKa is a stronger acid because lower pH is more acidic. What? What? Let's look mathematically at what pKa really. Let's do what we always do. Write out the equilibrium for an acid. And then do what we always do next. Oops, not that. And do products over reactants. The scenario posed by this prompt is if HA is equal numerically to A minus, if I have an equal concentration of the acid form and the base form, this equation gets simpler.
What's K equal to in that case? H3R plus. If then. What if I took the negative log of both sides of this equation? What's the negative log of K? Okay. What's the negative log of H2O plus? H. So you can look at this in neither order. You can say, if I look at my solution, or I do a calculation, and I find that HA is equal to A minus, I know what the pH is. The pH is the same as the pKa. The other way you can think about this is, if pH equals pKa, then the concentration is equal. If I take this equation, the Ka equation, oops, and rearrange it, do some logging, I get what's called the henderson hasselbach equation. Yep. You're welcome. sort of approach where I can take the negative log of both sides allows you to derive what's called the henderson hasselbach equation. So it's a new equation, and I give it to you on the exams. It's, uh, I mean, it's very common. It's not a secret thing. But it wasn't found empirically. It wasn't like something discovered in a lab. It's a mathematical rearrangement of what you've already done, products of the reactants of KA. It just happens to be um, a, a rearrangement that saves you time when you're doing buffers. So in that, it's very powerful. Here it is, the henderson hustle bulge, which I always thought was henderson hustle box. So this is a rearrangement. Ka equals products of the reactants. Most typically, you're presented this as a one variable type of problem. That is, you've got pH, pKa, concentration of A minus, and concentration of A. And then another parameter that you're commonly asked for is the ratio. So the A minus over HA, like that whole part. What's your favorite variable? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Huh? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to 
uh, uh, the recordings don't do it justice because they don't capture my grimace after making a bad joke. They capture your reaction to it, but they don't get the, the, the disappointment in myself. It's, it's, poor, it's poorly captured by this recording mechanism. Something to work on. Come on. Oh, oh, come on. Okay, so let's take the Henderson Asselbach equation. Let's do that. Let's take the Henderson Asselbach equation and set it up so that HA is the only variable. In my solution, not your solution. Buffered. Uh, I lactate buffered. Let's for which the PKA is three point eight six. Why do I always do lactate? Because it's a PKA. I remember. measured a pH of 3.10 and a lactate concentration of 0.37 molar. What is the concentration of lactic acid? So I'll rewrite the Henderson Hasselbach down here, but what's my concentration of ha? What did you guys get up? That's good, because that's what I got. I wasn't sure I was right. That seemed wrong. Yeah, it's 0.13. So 2.1 for 266. That's a lot of lactic acid. Yeah. That was an equilibrium problem. Is lactic acid weak or strong? It's weak because the pKa is given. So in the previous chapter, I would have done that with an ice cream. Here, you didn't have to do that because you had both and you used the Henderson's equation. So same thing, you can do it by another table. I think the book goes through an example where they're both side by side. Trust me, this is faster if you do this.
actually would, I actually would say they're all spontaneous, but not all positive. Is that what you were laughing at about this entire time? Think about it. You had a positive reaction, so it's not spontaneous. However, All right, I've lost you. Have a good weekend. You've now done weak, strong acid base, and you've started to do buffers. You are well on your way, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you soon. So you can only use the Henderson Hustle Botch and buffers? That's right. Okay. Pause.